There was a strange little phrase that Shona used and asked us down here to be praying for, that people would, re would receive the bread of life. Now, physical bread is what we eat when we are physically hungry. We're going to be talking about a different kind of hunger in a moment, although it looks like some people are coming around with some of those, wow, wow, da it turns out Daniel did actually decide to share after all. Um, and so there's some chopped up bits of donut and stuff coming around. So um, do, do help yourself as we go along. But if I were really, 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 really hungry, I did have something to eat before, uh, before we started this evening, but if, uh, th this, this morning, so I'm not that hungry. But if I were really, 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 really hungry, and I knew I needed to fill my belly with something, then would doing this work? This is a cushion, and this is my belly. Would doing this work? I'm just going to show that I can, show that my shirt isn't too tight. There we go. Still got it. There we go. Um, it's not going to pop open, don't worry. Um, am I, would, would, I, would I still be hungry? Yeah. What, what, but, but I filled my belly. My, my belly's looking bigger now. Surely, surely I, should, I, sh I shouldn't be hungry anymore. Well, of course not, because all I've done is I've put something on the outside. When actually what I need is I need something on the inside. That's where I need food in order to stop being hungry. I don't just need to put something on the outside. I need to put something on the inside. And when Jesus had just... I'm going to take it out. There you go. Um, when Jesus had just performed an amazing miracle... Feeling very airy now. When he'd just performed a really amazing miracle where he'd taken just a, a, a few loaves of fish... A, a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. And he turned them into enough food... For over 5,000 people to be able to eat and therefore to still be left over, he saw people who were physically hungry and he fed them in an amazing, miraculous way. Just after that, he then said these words. He said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me will never be hungry and anyone who believes in me will never go thirsty. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never go hungry and whoever comes to me will never be thirsty. He's not talking about physical food. He's not talking about being hungry in our belly and so eating food so that we're no longer hungry. He's talking about a hunger that we can have in our lives that's nothing to do with food. He's talking about those times in our life when we feel like mm, we just, we're not satisfied. We, 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 want, we believe there must be something more. There's something deeper. It can't just be about getting up in the morning and going to work and eating and sleeping and then doing the whole thing on repeat. It can't just be about all the things that we see around us. It, there's got to be more to that. The Bible says that, that we are made to be eternal beings. We're not just made for the here and now. We're made for something more. But so often life, I don't know if you're like me, sometimes life can feel small. It can feel little. It can feel a little bit like it's just on repeat. That's because there's a hunger for more. We desire something greater. We desire something bigger. We were made to have a relationship with the God who made the whole universe and who made us. We were made for something bigger than just what we can see around us. But sometimes we don't feel that. We don't get that. In the times when we just feel like, oh, we're stuck in a dead end. We don't know what's going on. Jesus says that he's the bread of life. He's not just the bread of food, the bread of not being physically hungry. He can make us no longer hungry at all. He can fill all of our spiritual hunger. He can give us the kind of life that will always be satisfying. That's what Jesus is offering. But again, I don't know if you're like me. And sometimes, like I can do with this, instead of looking for Jesus to come and fill me on the inside, I can just try and pad my life with lots of things on the outside. The kinds of things that might make me happy for a little bit. Whether that's, whether that's a job, whether that's a relationship, whether that's people, whether that's family, whether that's coming to church. But if it's not actually about asking Jesus to fill me up on the inside, to fill me up with his spirit, to fill me up with his life, to give me something that comes from the inside out. If I just try and pad my life with lots of things that keep me happy for a bit, I'm going to go hungry again because it's not actually filled me up. And so this morning... What we want to encourage everyone to do is to ask, are we letting Jesus be our bread, the bread of life? Are we letting him be the thing that fills us up? Or are we trying to distract ourselves and use lots of other things to keep us going 
when actually he says, if you believe in me and if you come to me, you'll never be hungry. But I want to remind you, take you right back to the beginning of our time when we had three gentlemen up here. We had Daniel and we had Andy and we had Stuart and they were all hungry. We'd asked them not to eat. Um, in fact, originally when I asked them during, when I asked them, uh, during this week, could you, could you not eat? Uh, the original ask was, could you not eat for a whole day beforehand pretty much? So could you not have dinner yesterday evening? But uh, one of them had an important family celebration. Andy was doing that and I felt a bit, a bit mean asking him not to eat there. And uh, uh, Daniel was, uh, was playing at the, uh, at the, at the jazz uh, thing last night. And since that was a nice, uh, nice meal that he, that he got as part of that, would have felt really mean not to ask him to do that. So we just went for breakfast in the end. Uh, but really hungry, hungry, wanting food, dreaming about what kind of food it would be. Some beautiful um, pastries and baked goods and wonderful sort of um, continental breakfast over here. Moving this way, a sort of healthy, fruity, yogurty, delightful breakfast here. And then under here absolutely nothing. And I just want to think for a moment about the response that we had from these two gentlemen here. Andy, very quick to say, have some strawberries, have some of my banana, here you go. Uh, do, you, do you want to have some yogurt? Enjoy some of what I've got, you can have that too. And Daniel, because we'd asked him to, said no. Because if he'd said yes, I wouldn't have been able to do this bit. Really simple, isn't it? None of us, I'm sure none of us here, if we had food, literally had food in front of us, we had a plate full of food and we knew someone right next to us was starving. There was more than we needed ourselves anyway. And we knew that they were absolutely starving. None of us would hesitate, I'm sure, to say, here you go, have some of mine. I, I, I believe in you all. I believe in us all enough to say that I'm pretty sure we would all do that. Well, we've been talking not just about physical food, but about spiritual food, about Jesus being our life, about him being the bread of life, the one, who, uh, the one who satisfies us, the one who means that we don't have to be hungry anymore, hungering after different things because Jesus has given us everything we need to be close to God. When we've been fed, when we've been given, the same thing applies. We can then give it away. We can then share. We can then pass it on to other people. I've mentioned this, uh, this verse a couple of times in the last few weeks. But when Jesus was with his friends, he sent them out. He sent them out to share the good news with other people. And there was a time when he looked around and he saw how many people there was so much need around. And he said this. And since we're thinking about, about harvest and about sharing and about food today, it's a really relevant verse. He said this in Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Jesus said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out more workers into the field. And when he said the harvest is plentiful, what he means is there's so much out there. There's so much out there that can be, that can be reaped. There's so much opportunity there. Then he says, but there's not many people to go and do it. So he said, so pray that God would raise up more people. Now we, very often... I'm sure a lot of us will regularly pray. We'll ask God for things. We'll ask God to answer our prayers. How cool is it the once in a while when we get to be an answer to Jesus's prayer? And when Jesus is saying, pray that God would raise up more people to send out into the harvest to tell people about the life that I want to give them, we get to, volu we, we get to be part of that. We get to be people who say, I'm going to answer Jesus's prayer by, by saying to God, use me. Send me out. I want to share what you've given me. So in the same way that we would want to give food to someone who is hungry, we get to give away that bread of life. We get to give away Jesus. We get to share him with people. So that that thing that they really need, they can find where it is that they can get it. That we can be people who, in the power of the Spirit, go out and offer the Spirit of life, offer Jesus to people. 